I'm from Baldwin County. I'm from right outside of Daphne. Grew up in Christ the King Parish. My parents would say, you can be married, you can be a priest, or you can be single. So I always had this in my mind. Those are the possibilities. And I didn't really understand how that worked. I thought that maybe you're just kind of hit with it. Because I, I went to college, and and it really wasn't my plan to be a priest. I was accepted to medical school, but one of my friends invited me to South Alabama's Catholic uh, student ministry. And the vocations director was there, Father Alex Valadares. And I was kind of confronted with this because I always knew of the possibility, but then I was like, huh, I can actually do this. I can actually, I think I really need to try this out. If I wasn't there, I probably would have went to, I would have followed through with with my plans and going to medical school. And what I love most about priesthood, celebrating mass, going to visit the sick and anointing them. Beyond that, being with the people. I think we do pretty well with ministering in parishes to middle class and above. People who may be struggling financially, I don't think we, at least I, this is at least my perspective, we don't do as well. So I think about three and a half years ago, the second reading was from the, the Paul's letter to Philemon. So the heart of the letter is about Onesimus. Onesimus was a slave, and uh, Paul says, accept him back as your brother. And I was reading in the, the commentary on that, that slaves were considered lazy, immoral, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and it struck me, I, that's one of the things we think about you know, the poor, lazy, immoral, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in my homily, I mentioned that, and I can make that connection to something we need to think about is how can we minister to these people and also invite them in? Like, we need to ask the questions, why are they not in our church? <laughs> why are they not here at Mass? So it's interesting, and this is an example of the Holy Spirit working. The week later, this couple came up and said, I've been thinking about this, and I think one reason why the poor are not in our church is because we're not answering their needs. And we, we've been thinking about maybe, you know, maybe a food pantry and ministering um, to people's concrete needs. Maybe that'll help. I said, okay, well, let's think about that and discern that. And my thing is, like, if three people are kind of on the same page, then we, we'll go ahead with it. The next week, after Sunday Mass, someone came up and said, I'm, I've been really thinking about this homily. And I, I was thinking about maybe we could start a food pantry. I was like, okay. I said, you're the number three, so we're going to get you together. And I asked Sister Penny because I knew she had done some work with food pantries. I had the four, the four of them and me, and we did a lot of planning for like six or seven months before we even we researched other food pantries to see what the best methods were. And then we finally opened up three years ago. And a typical food pantry day is people coming in waves, a tidal wave at the very beginning of the food pantry, uh, of when we open up the food pantry. I'm not gonna lie, like the first 10 minutes, today was good. Usually like the first 10 minutes, I'm pretty stressed. And I, I'm gonna say this, I fail sometimes. <laughs> I fail with that. Like, you know, I'm like anybody, I can be, struggle with the same things, like being short sometimes, being impatient sometimes, but you know, you have to, what I've learned is you have to forgive yourself and move forward. The only way we can see Christ in the poor is through the eyes of faith. We can't do it, it's not just a cliche thing, it's not just something, hey, well, let's see Christ in the poor. <laughs> it's an act of faith, it's also a challenge.